Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scrap Empire. This is Zach Hayes, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the heavyweight co-main event for this upcoming UFC Fight Night. We're going to be featuring Sergei Spivak going up against Tom Aspinall. Now, Tom Aspinall former boxer, right? He sparred Tyson. He was sparring Tyson Fury when he was trying to get into the boxing world and then eventually made a grand appearance back into the UFC, to the Ultimate Fighter Championship, to the mixed martial arts, into the, into the mixed martial arts world. Now, when you look at Tom Aspinall, right, he has literally everything to make himself marketable. He has the tattoos. He has the nice haircut. He's a 6'5 heavyweight, you know, and his face looks, you know, like he, 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 he has a face that people would consider aesthetically pleasing, right? So, what, what, what? What would make this guy want to be the heavyweight champion of the world, right? What would make this guy want to be fighting up against potential opponents such as Francis Nagano and John Jones, Sipe Miocic, Hanzo Rosenstrike? What would make this guy so unique to try to, to, to compete against the top guys in the division? I'll get started on Tom Aspinall. Now, with that fight between him and Andre Olovsky, right? Look at the way how Tom Aspinall throws his hands. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He has that style, that serial game style. This is exactly what I'm talking about with fighters that represent um, certain regions of Europe. You know, they have a very odd, quirky posture when it comes to them. You know, they, they, they put it, they have a unique, odd posture. Again, you have to really watch boxing, mixed martial arts to get a glimpse of what I'm saying. Right? So, but then the first round, the first round starts. Tomas, you know, poised jab, keeping the left hand aligned to his left knee. Left elbow looking down to the left toe, keeping a left hand up, keeping a right hand tucked in, and everything is just so fluid. All of his punches are sharp. All of his all of his punches are fluid. Are fluid. All of his punches are just oh, every. He looks like he looks like a ballerina. He's a heavyweight. He's tall, but he moves like he's a Max Holloway when he's in the ring. Now I don't know if it's due to due to his boxing experience of him sparring one of the greatest master class fighters I've ever seen in my entire life, Tyson Fury. But this guy knows how to move really, really well. And of course, Andre Olovsky, you know, he's heavy handed and he's willing to exchange tough shots because he's a really physically um, intimidating guy from a perception standpoint as well. But Tom Ospinel, right, he was throwing combinations, and he almost stopped Andre Olovsky in the first round as well. Right now, hope now it was it was due to the perseverance and determination of Andre Olovsky that allowed him to go into the second round, right, and not get the and not have the stop fight by the referee, and it all. And it almost got to that point because Tom Aspinall kept on throwing the combinations, throwing the combinations, throwing the combinations, pound and 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 pound pound him over and over and over and over again. Right? Okay. Now the second round starts. Tom Aspinall, you know, staying disciplined, you know, you you using his pivot, using his pivot, you know, you using his pivot, staying strong. You know, keep 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 keeping keeping great discipline, militant pop 
militant posture, right? But again, this is when you have to say, okay, now I have to bring something else into the arsenal. So now the second round starts, right? And Tom Ospinel sees an opening to have Andre Larovsky in the headlock. So he has him in a headlock, and he takes advantage of it. So, and it only took him about 20 seconds for Andre Alarsky to succumb. Not to succumb as if he's in a weak or inferior position, because I would never disrespect the great Andre Alarsky like that. But again, it's interesting how it, it didn't take him that long to execute his submission. It didn't, it didn't take him that long to execute the victory. It, 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 it didn't take him that long to execute the goal. Which is to win and to win in any fashion. So but there was a knockout or whether he won by submission. He had a disciplined style. He fought. He 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 had a lot of, he, he 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 had a lot of clarity with his approach coming into that fight. He also had a great circle around him. So bloody hell he put up a he put he, he put up a bloody performance. Now Sergei Spivak and Marcin Tiburon. Now, that fight went all the way to decision. A three-round exhibition against the two guys, right? Now, Sergei Spivak, of course, right, doesn't necessarily remind me of a Tom Ospino because Tom Ospino not only hits harder, but he's more fluid and he's taller. So you're going to see more. Like, it's not so much that you're going to, well, you're going to see more. That's inevitable, but he's already going to have a top, a uh, Impact just with his presence, over the way he fights, over the way he, from his fight. When you add all of these qualities into one, that's going to make him stand out. But you know, Sergey Spivak, yes, he's you know stiff, but he knows. But but again, he throws with emphasis. He emphasizes on throwing. But again, Marcin Tiburon, this is what this is when this is when. You need a certain amount of knowledge with watching fights over, 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 over again for years, for months, years, weeks, days, weeks, months, and years compared to somebody like me who's been watching it for years, 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 right? Because Marcin Tiberi literally was the tactical copycat throughout the entire fight because we all know that Sergei Spivak is coming to fight. He's coming to get what he wants. He's coming to what he's coming to earn the victory. But see, this is when you have to be the best you. Not everybody's going to appeal to your style. Not everybody's going to gravitate towards how you fight. Because from perception and superficial aesthetic standpoint, when you see somebody like Marcel Tiberi fight, and he has somebody such as Sergei Spivak or any opponent on a ground for that for X amount of time and landing ground strikes, it can come across as boring. It can come across as like people might not be people might not appeal to it only because again you have certain martial arts boxing is a technique based martial art. So because there's more technique involved with that with that structure of fighting, you know, it can be more appealing to the average person because they see two guys just mostly th they see two guys mainly throwing head strikes throughout the entire rounds and you know we all know that the human head is like we're meant to fight but at the same time you know you don't want to constantly be taking shots to the head you want to take shots to that you want to take shots to the chest you want to take shots to the stomach you want to take shots to the leg but to constantly take pounded and pounded and pounded and pounded and pounded shots all over to the head, right? Depending on your genetic vari your genetic makeup, you might be able to just take it and drink water after the fight, and you'll be fine. And you might, you know, have some long term damage. It really depends up to the individual, and it really depends on how you handle it as well. But get let me let's get back to the point now, right? Marcin Tiberi was landing the was landing effective strikes against Sergei Spivak and really put in a and and and, 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 and it, like he moves like a spider when he's fighting because he yeah he he implements so much 
tack, like like some different variations of 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 ground techniques when he's on the ground when he's on, when, when when he has his opponent on the floor you know when when he's wrestling right so that's why you need to maximize certain martial arts or certain fighting styles right and even if the people aren't going to appeal to it, it doesn't matter how they feel it just matters about you getting the victory getting a hand raise getting get getting the get getting the championship getting get getting the 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 w getting the fifty thousand dollar bonus that's what it's really about right and so and and you know marshall tiberia he marshall tiberia he not only can demonstrate different variations of technique techniques when he's on the ground he knows how to keep his hands up and he can stop certain people like circus perfect who has the power to knock any anybody out it's not that he's the greatest just some people it have the power to knock you out right but again just because you can knock anyone out it doesn't make you the best fighter look at Deontay Wall he can knock anybody out in the division but is he the best fighter I don't think so I don't think so right but all right you need to, you, you know, Marcin Tiberi, he, he, he knows how to um, extract your game plan out of you without you even seeing it. And those are the fighters that you have to be careful for. Those are the fighters you have to watch out for, right? Because, again, I'm not looking at just the, 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 the punches that are being thrown, the strikes. I'm just looking at the posture. I'm looking at the ladder movement. I'm looking at how the hands are being I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at how the the the, the, the hands are being um, put. I, I look at the way how they um, how I look at the way how the fighter keeps his hands up. It's the little details, you know. I look at the way how they're looking at their opponent. I look at the way I, I, I try to see if they're looking at the stomach. I try to see if they're looking at the um, waist. I try to see if they're looking at the shoulders. Just the little details that count. Now I broke down. Sergey Spivak, and I broke down Tom Aspinall's body. Now, who do I see you in? Now, not only does Tom Aspinall has the ability to knock you out, he's a very, very, very strong guy as well. And there's also another fight on UFC Fight Pass when he had a bout on Cage Warriors. And within the first two minutes, his opponent broke his leg while trying to hit Tom Aspinall. Now is that too is that due to is that due to him having strong bones to the point where if your opponent attempts to land a leg strike on you, he breaks his own leg. Tom Ospino, that's why I'm saying he's a very unique fighter. And I think that he could be a very, very special guy in the division. He has the talent and he has the discipline. I see Tom Ospino beating Sergey Spivak, either by knockout by decision. He's too quick, he's too sharp. He's too fast at this particular point right now. Not saying that Sergey Spivak can prove any of us wrong, right? Because he can't. But I'm just saying, uh, but again, I observe critically and analytically when it comes to my fights. I observe really, really, I pay a lot of attention to every little detail to make my conclusions. Just like with the Sarah Gan and Derek Lewis fight. You know, I took a lot of time out to watch the Sarah Gon matches, and I ended up being right. Sarah Gon put up a masterclass performance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrap Empire. Please like, comment, subscribe to my content. Thank you all for watching my channel. Please leave any constructive criticism or feedback that you think allow me that that you that you feel will allow me to help elevate and elevate my channel. They will feel that. Will, that you that you think will allow my channel to grow exponentially. Thank you all for watching my content. It's been an honor to speak to all of you guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye.